Hi everybody and welcome to a new exciting series called Deep Learning Audio Application from Design to Deployment. Many of you guys have asked me how can I deploy a TensorFlow model into production? Well, I figured I would create a whole series to teach you how to do that. So all the things that you learn in this series are going to be uh, good for any type of use case that you have. So it could be like image recognition, music generation, whatever you want. Uh, but uh, I obviously had to pick a specific use case. Uh, so I decided to go with something that's in line with, with this channel. And you, some of you may know that I do AI audio and music. Specifically, I picked a simple type of speech recognition system that's called keyword spotting. So a keyword spotting system is able to identify a limited number of keywords. So we're talking about classification here. So we have audio files, we analyze those and then we decide what keywords we have like in those audio files. And um, this type of applications is used for voice user interfaces because obviously you can give like some uh, user commands and then uh, just identify which keywords, which commands uh, you, you've just uttered. Cool. So let me show you how a keyword spotting system works uh, when you use a deep learning model. Well, it's extremely straight, straightforward here. So as an input, we have a an audio file. Basically, we're gonna do some transformation here, but I don't want to delve into that right now. So we have this audio file where we have the keyword itself, and then uh, we fit it into a network. And in our case, we're gonna build a convolutional neural network. And then we're gonna get out a prediction, uh, which is a keyword. So it could be down, it could be up, it could be left, right. And in our application specifically, we're gonna have 10 different uh, labels or 10 different keywords. Good. Okay, so now I want to uh, show you uh, this uh, application and what we're gonna build throughout this series so that you learn uh, yeah, what we are up to. Good. Uh, the first thing though, I want to show you the type of audio files that we're going to send uh, to this uh, deployed uh, TensorFlow keyword spotting model. Uh, so uh, here we have one. Down. Down. Very simple. Here another. Left. Good. Okay, so now let's see what we're going to uh, be building. So this is what we're gonna arrive at. So basically this is a, a web server uh, and uh, it's, it's running on a, an EC2 instance. And then here we have like the whole uh, keyword spotting system like running and listening to incoming uh, requests. And so here I have a client that is able to uh, to place post requests sending over uh, WAV files. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna send the down uh, WAV file that we've just heard, and then we're gonna take back, get back a prediction with uh, the, the predicted keyword. So let me do that. So I've run this and here we go. So predicted keyword is down. So what basically just happened is the client has like sent a request uh, to this guy here, to the web server, and then we received back a, a prediction which is down. Now let's try with the other file that we had here. So the left.wav. And so uh, to do that, I'll just need to change this to left.wav and then I'll rerun that. And here we go. We have as predicted keyword left. Good. Now, obviously I'm not gonna get into the details like of this code or like the, the web server itself, because obviously this is what we're gonna build. But what I want to do in this video is give you like an overview of what you are gonna learn and at the same time, the type of architecture that we're gonna need like to 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 uh, put this uh, keyword spotting system into uh, production. So let's go back here. Here we go. We have the whole architecture. I know that this is going to be a, a quite a lot like to to take in, but bear with me because like this is extremely important that you learn the whole thing. 
the, so this is the big the bigger picture right so what uh, you've just seen is basically the client and with the client uh, we send a post request uh, attaching or sending over like the audio file right and then we have an AWS EC2 instance here which is going to act uh, as our like we uh, web application here and so this incoming request is going to be channeled to nginx which is our web server then nginx is going to uh, proxy the incoming request through a unix socket to uwiski which is another uh, web server an application server and what uwiski does it basically fires a callable object which is a python uh, flask application and once we arrive at the flask application uh, the flask application has an endpoint where like tensorflow gets fired and so uh, we get uh, this tensorflow um, model uh, in place and it's gonna make a prediction and the prediction is going to be like our keyword and then uh, the result is going to be sent back to uwiski then to nginx and all the way back to the client and so that's what we've seen in the uh, example that i've shown you like earlier cool so now you may be wondering but why do we need two web servers here so we have nginx so why do we need uwiski well, Nginx is a very capable web server and highly efficient, and it's used in a lot of production settings, but it has a shortcoming when it comes to Python. And the shortcoming is it doesn't uh, speak the WSGI protocol. WSGI stands for Web Server Gateway Interface, and it's the protocol that you need to use for uh, having like a communication between a Python application and a web server. So here's the role of UWSGI. So UWSGI obviously speaks that language, speaks that standard. So when we st uh, send stuff from Nginx to UWSGI, so we're basically asking UWSGI to translate the incoming request and uh, using a protocol that then can be used by the uh, Flask application. Good. So now you have an idea of the overall um, architecture. Now the next step is to look into what we are actually going to implement, uh, which is like a little bit more than what I've shown you just now, because we're going to be using Docker and specifically uh, we are uh, going to be building two Docker containers. So one for Nginx, and it's over here, and the other one is for Uwiski, Flask, and TensorFlow. Now you may be wondering, but what's a Docker container? Well, a Docker container is a standalone uh, software package that has all the code, all the libraries to run a an application. Uh, so why are we using that? Well, we're using that, first of all, because now it's kind of like the, the, the standard and it's great like if you know how to deploy doc applications using Docker, but at the same time, because it's very advantageous because with a Docker container, uh, you don't need to worry about whether or not like the application you've built is going to run on different platforms. Docker containers are cross platforms. So the moment you've built one, it's going to work on Linux, on Windows, and on Mac, no matter the type of machine you have. Right. But our application is a multi uh, container application. So in order to orchestrate different containers together, we are going to be using Docker Compose which enables us to build a network of containers and to have the different containers talking to each other. In this case, we have two containers, so Nginx and Flask, and they'll, uh, with Docker Compose, we're going to be able to let them talk to each other. Good. So this is like the overall architecture. So what we're going to be doing throughout uh, the, the, the next videos is basically building uh, all the different components that you see here. So we're going to start by building uh, the TensorFlow model. 
uh, which is going to be obviously like the core of our application because it's the keyword spotting system. Then we're going to uh, implement that system into like a Flask API. Then we're going to add uh, UWSGI. Then we're going to build uh, like the Docker containers. And finally, we're going to deploy all uh, of our uh, stuff on an AWS EC2 instance. So what are we going to learn? So there's a lot of things and I'm sure that you're going to get a lot of value out of these videos, but let's review all the different, uh, one and, uh, all the different things one at a time. So the first thing that you learn is to build a simple speech recognition system in TensorFlow. So you're also going to be learning a little bit about TensorFlow and Keras in the process. Then you're going to learn how to implement a simple Flask API, how to set up a web ecosystem for Python that uses Nginx, UWSGI, and Flask. Then you're going to get familiar with Docker and you're going to learn how to uh, set up AWS EC2 instances and how to deploy TensorFlow models on AWS via SSH and SCP. Good. One thing that I want to specify here is that uh, yes, we're going to talk about Flask, we're going to talk about Docker, but I'm not going to delve too much into the nitty gritty details there because this is not uh, what uh, what the, the scope and the goal of this uh, uh, video uh, series is going to be. So yes, we're going to talk about Flask and Docker, but we're going to just touch upon the things that we're going to need. Now, if you want to learn more about this, uh, things, you can just like check out YouTube or the internet because there's a lot of resources. But what I've seen that's really uh, missing uh, on YouTube as well is like serving uh, an AI model uh, and like building it and from the design all the way to uh, production and deployment. And so this is like the overall picture that we're going to uh, uh, focus on. Great. So not everyone can uh, follow this series uh, easily. So in order to follow it, you're going to need to have a, an intermediate Python uh, level. And then it'd be great if you're familiar with uh, TensorFlow and uh, Keras. Obviously, like this is like uh, an advisable, advisable thing, but it's not necessary because I'm going to be like reviewing some of like the basic stuff here. So you can follow along now. If you don't know TensorFlow or Keras and specifically like deep learning for audio, I have a whole series on that that touches upon all the different like details and you're going to be building also like a uh, neural network like from scratch. And if you want to check that out, I have it over here. So you ch can check out the, the link to this video. Great. Okay. So what's next? So the first thing that we need to do, as is always the case when you build AI system, systems, is to prepare uh, the data set. And in this case, we're going to prepare the voice data set with all the different commands. Good. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If that's the case, consider like subscribing for also having more of these videos. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comment section below. And I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers.